Hello everybody, my name is James Vogt. I'm a landscape photographer in the lower Hudson Valley region of New York State. I've been taking pictures for most of my life and hiking these trails for just as long. The marriage of my two favorite pastimes have led me on many adventures over the years, especially since beginning my photography journey as a professional. Luckily, I've been fortunate to display my work in a local gallery several businesses in the area, and have even been featured on Canon USA on their social media outlets. Avenza Maps has asked me to share my experiences with you today in regards to how their app and my photography have become partners in my success over the years as a photographer. It all started when I'd been able to obtain maps for my local parks here through their app. This has developed into collecting maps for numerous types of adventures over the years, whether it be around here in my local area, the Catskills in New York State, the Adirondacks, Maine, the Great Smoky Mountains of Tennessee, and even Walt Disney World in Florida. There are many maps available for any type of adventure that you can take. So today I wanna to share with you the planning and the finished work of my most recent adventure in photography that took me to Death Valley and Lone Pine, California for some desert and Sierra mountain photography. So let's get started. Like any profession, there are generally a collection of tools that are needed in order to successfully do the job, right? For photography, I obviously have a camera, some lenses, and other gear for taking photos, but I also utilize other uh, pieces of software tools as well. Outside of post-processing, a large part of my time in photography is actually spent in planning. Mind you, there's a fair amount of pie-in-the-sky type fantasy for the various places that I want to go. The planning always starts with a location. When locations are chosen, I start with some points of interest that I would like to photograph, or at least explore for a photograph or two. This is where Avenza comes in for me. As these locations are found, I start dropping pins on the map or any maps that I might be using for that area. In this case, I was using the OSM base maps and the National Geographic trail maps for the area. The specific point of interest doesn't really matter at this point, as this is just the initial, initial collection of points to investigate. So, I as, end, so I, as I end up with a map that looks like this in the beginning, these collections are exported from the app, so that way I have some names and locations to start documenting for ideas of what I would like to shoot. Clearly, my imagination is much larger than my time budget at times, so when I start to whittle down the list into something more manageable, I could do other things besides photography. You know, like sleep or eat. As the list is whittled down, I'm back in the Avenza app cleaning up any of the waypoints that I've laid down, but also starting to take down information from the app, like distances, elevation differences, and whether it is a marked trail or a road or just a feature to be found through exploring. Having distances and elevation differences are crucial to the planning. If I want to plan to hit up several places, I can't always spend a lot of time hiking to a single location that's a multiple mile round trip gaining a thousand feet of elevation as I go. When I am outside of my home area that I can visit all the time, efficiency is certainly key. So with a few points of interest located, let's start exploring. And welcome to Death Valley. So, most of the time, normal people don't want to visit a desert location at all, especially me. I don't like it to be too hot or too humid, and with Death Valley recording some of the largest worldwide record temperatures of over 130 degrees in the daytime, I wanted to make sure that I visited at the end of February and the beginning of March where the highest temperature one day when I was there was right around 70 degrees. The marquee location in Death Valley for me on this trip was the Mesquite Flat Sand Dunes. It was along my route for the trip and there were no extra diversions that were necessary. And the idea of climbing some of the sand dunes was especially fascinating to me. It was kind of like going to the beach without having the ocean or lake. I think I drove too far. I'm at the beach. So I was using the trail map to identify places in the area that I wanted to get to. I made sure to mark them on the map as well. Having the coordinates out of the app was especially helpful now because I could load them into my photo planning app to see things like where the sun and the moon would be at certain times of the day, where the Milky Way and Galactic Center were as well. I really do enjoy shooting sunrises and sunset, but I also wanted to challenge myself a little bit with some midday photography and maybe some after sunrise photos to capture something that I felt would be a little bit different 
but also indicative of my photography style. So I made sure to stop around lunchtime on my way to Lone Pine on the one day, and I got up for sunrise the next time that I was in the area to capture both of those periods of time. This also gave me the opportunity to scout a little bit and help refine some of my waypoints. This was really good because while I had measurements and distance and such, I was not prepared for the absolute scale of the sand dunes. This allowed me to adjust my plans a little bit and make a few waypoints on some of the shorter dunes and valleys between those dunes. But I, could, but I also found that I could see the dunes from a portion of the road that was, a, that was aligned with after the sunrise shot that I wanted to get. And because there are no officially marked trails at this location, I used my waypoints and other navigational aids in the app to prevent me from getting lost in the desert. As a result of this planning, these are the three photos that I came away with. So with these photos, I wanted to capture not only the scale of the area, but also the shapes and textures that went with it. The textures of the post-dawn sand dunes with the mountains in the background are one of my favorites. But being able to see the diversity of the landscape with the scrubby brush and then the dunes and then the mountains created a great scene for a view to walk through visually. But then for scale, seeing a person on top of the dune looking out and having other dunes and mountains towering behind them was also an impressive sight to behold. So for now, let's continue our trip and head over to Lone Pine, California. Welcome to the Alabama Hills, California. So, now that we're in the Lone Pine area, it is home to several really interesting features and it was hard to narrow down exactly what it was that I wanted to see. Also to note, I was meeting up with a group for part of this portion of the trip, so some of my plans were also subject to change. Luckily, everybody in the group are all photographers, so we all share a lot of similar mindsets in that respect. Some of the features that I really enjoyed here and made sure to see were Mount Whitney, the Alabama Hills Movie Road, and also a, desti a destination with the group members that proved to have a deep historical significance as well. Now, a lot of my waypoints here are mostly roadsides or short walks, which was really convenient considering that I also had discovered how sore I was from climbing all the sand dunes the days before arriving in Lone Pine in Death Valley. But I also wanted to start with the historical location first. This photo was impactful to me because it shows me a little bit of the strength and determination standing tall with the mountains behind it and an oncoming storm. This location is known as Manzanar. It was an internment camp during World War II that was used to incarcerate Japanese Americans after the attacks on Pearl Harbor. Landscape photography master Ansel Adams had shot several images here documenting the life of the people that were here, that were incarcerated here, juxtaposed against the incredible landscape that is present. I have to admit that I was incredibly moved by the stories I heard about this place, and I hold this image with a lot of respect and reverence because of what happened to Americans in our own American history. But then next up, being able to explore the Alabama Hills movie road was a great journey because I learned about all of the shows and movies that were filmed there. Films and shows like Gunga Din, The Lone Ranger, Gladiator, and even the opening of a certain Marvel superhero movie called Iron Man. And while there are a lot of really cool nooks and crannies along the movie road, I used that area to take some mountain photos with my telephoto lens, since I have never been to or have seen large mountains like this to photograph before. Again, like I said earlier, it was about efficiency. So the first of which is a photo of Mount Whitney with the mountains all socked in with some clouds that made for what I thought was a really interesting image. The hard lines of the mountain with the fluffiness of the clouds, with the sun rays peeking through, also made for a really nice silhouette with some details of the mountains in it. From there, I had an opportunity to get closer to Mount Whitney by making my way up to the Whitney portal. I fell a little bit short of the final destination since I found out that the portal is closed during the winter time. It does not open until later in the spring. So I took this photo of Mount Whitney obscured by the clouds with a lone bare tree on the mountain slopes where they meet in the portal. This area is so rich with history and with so many sites to see that I found a few extra locations to mark off in order to return later because the three days that I was here was clearly not even enough to fully explore it. 
So now that I'm home and have finished dumping all of the sand that my shoes have collected out, you can see from my original map and with the waypoints marked on it that I did not even come close to making all of the photos that I had originally planned. But I think I've left myself some options for making a case to return to both areas in order to investigate more compositions for more photos to take. Having the ability to track my waypoints and do my research through the Avenza app is absolutely essential to ensuring the success of my photography. And it helps me keep track of all the locations and places to revisit so I don't have to redo my research over again for each trip. Another thing that is really nice that I only just recently found out after this particular trip is that I can add photos to my markers and waypoints in the app. This is kind of a neat feature that I really like. So I can take a photo of the area with my phone, upload it into the app to be able to demonstrate to other people the photos that I've taken. But also if I'm going to return to this location at some point in the future, I can refresh my somewhat faulty memory of what the location looks like. So I can either recreate a composition that I've already taken or use it as a starting point in finding another composition to take. And then the last thing that I do is all of my waypoints for a particular trip go into their own layer so that way they can be recalled, edited, or exported as needed. So to wrap up, thank you very much for joining me today and thank you to Avenza for inviting me to speak with you about my work combined with the essential app in my toolbox for photography planning. I look forward to many, many more successful adventures in the future with the Avenza Maps app and my photography. If you wish to connect with me and see the photos featured here in this video and others, you can find me at James Vogue Photography on YouTube, Instagram, Facebook, and Threads. Thanks again, and happy adventuring.